You know, it's the strangest feeling. It, it, it's weird. 2016 was, at this point, it's got to be like, what, four years ago? Yeah, because I, I can't do basic math, apparently. 2016 was a very interesting time in the chronological history of YouTube. The manifesto will print this as one of the most dastardly times of YouTube's history. For a multitude of reasons, first off, of course, we had the apocalypse, you know. I say we as in, well, the YouTube community, even though I wasn't, I wasn't really doing much back then, but anyways. I'm here to talk about clickbait, okay? Clickbait, it's a very interesting subject matter. It has, it's got some shifty origins, right? Nothing too on point, but I can roughly trace it back to the YouTube apocalypse. Now, before this video starts, don't forget, like and subscribe, and let's just get right into the meat and potatoes of this thing. So, YouTube clickbait. What is it? Well, basically, it's when, let's just say, a, a certain YouTuber, you know, has a video, alright, has a video idea, but says, you know what, this isn't actually going to get any views. So, how can I, how can I spice this up? How can I make it so that, basically, like, this is like the Olive Garden, where you have the breadsticks, but then the rest of the meal is actually just complete crap? Yeah, the breadsticks butter you up a little bit, so... YouTubers are, we're trying to think of a way for basically decades, for eons, how can we make the breadsticks of YouTube? And you know what? They found a way. Clickbait thumbnails and YouTube titles. And it's a very simple concept. Red arrows, random circles everywhere. Anything that can get you to stop and be like, hey, yo, what's that over there? Now, if you ask me, the reason it works, which, let, there's no denying it, it absolutely works. I don't know if this is just a me thing, which I'm willing to bet that it isn't, but it's all just, again, this is all just my interpretation of things, so. It's basically, I'll be scrolling through, right, my feed. And every time I see a red arrow, a random red circle, or anything that looks like a stop sign or a directional sign on a road, I'll just stop and pay of decent amount of attention to it. Like, I'll literally just keep scrolling, stop, and really look at the video. It's almost as if, like, they found a way to basically guarantee that their video is at least seen with these clickbait thumbnails. Now, I'm not going to name any names, because honestly, it's it's been almost like half a decade now at this point. If you know who the real culprits of clickbait are, hell, I, even I've done a little bit of clickbait in my time, but Regardless, so that's a video for another day. Let's just get into the point of this video. Where did all this come from? Because you're definitely going to be scrolling through your YouTube feed, and you're going to see a decent amount of red arrows, random circles. You're most likely going to think nothing of it. But back in the day, back in 2016, oh boy, if you had anything, anything at all that looked just a teensy tiny bit, like had a little bit, just a semblance, if you had something that looked even close to a red arrow or a random circle, you were getting beat up on by everyone in the community. You were the community's punching bag, my friend. You gotta have, honestly, you gotta have some durability to take that type of, like, the views are fine, the views are good, but you gotta have some mental toughness to take the criticism that came with doing some clickbait. Some people just didn't care. Others maybe took it a little too seriously, but regardless, let's move on with where it actually came from. Now, 2016 Adpocalypse. Again, I say, I'm not going to go over it too much. It's a video in itself. Basically, PewDiePie, random journalistic article that shall not be named because F them, decided to get into a little beef. PewDiePie won, told him to come try again. Journalistic article company said, sure, why not? And they actually did come back and ended up downing like 50% of YouTube's ad revenue for the next year. That was basically how the adpocalypse pretty much started. There's tons of videos on it, people have explained it better than me, so just go watch those fellas. I'm, I mean, at this point, it's, it's, it's honestly like, I wouldn't be surprised if you're in grade school and you see this subject come up in actual history classes, it's so historic at this point, but. So, obviously, people are down bad, right? People, they're out of their jobs, basically, because while well, YouTube ad revenue is as low as it's ever been, and most people have committed to YouTube as like a full-time job. I've seen many creators that have actually personally watched quit in that time period because they just couldn't make any money. They are going to go homeless if they kept this up, so they had to quit. So people were getting desperate, and one of the ideas, some Picasso, some absolute, revo like, some revolutionary, some goddamn architect of his time must have been like, hey, yo, you know those things, right, those signs on the roads that even at a young age, even when you're not able to even legally drive, are basically eye-catching, how can we implement that into, into our videos? Because definitely that'll make it way easier to get clicks and get views. 
And so they came up with the glorious, the most notorious clickbait arrow. It's a beautiful thing. It's a work of art, I tell you. Ladies and gentlemen, this, this, this arrow has been terrorizing YouTube thumbnails for years now, as I've said, half a decade. And it, it's no real, there's no real mystery to it, honestly. It's, it's plain cut and dry. People said, we need more clicks, how can we get more clicks? They decided, okay, let's take those road signs, those directional signs that you're really going to want to pay attention to in real life, and use that instinct to our advantage. And so they did. People obviously were pissed off at this, okay? You work at a thumbnail for maybe half an hour, an hour, a beautiful masterpiece, and then some dude with a, a red arrow and a YouTube logo just slap that on there, blur out the background, you know, like... <laughs> Like, and then just, bam, it works. Like, you're just, you're livid at that point. And most, everyone was livid. I mean, come on now. First of all, and how how can we fully say that this isn't manipulative, okay? People are using other people's instincts of road signage and just attention to detail against them. To their own advantage, so to speak. So, naturally, people were obviously livid about this. And if you had anything of a clickbait thumbnail, like, if you decide to hop on this trend, <laughs> oh, it wasn't going to be an easy bandwagon to ride, let me tell you. This one had many bumps in the roads. Many criticisms were being thrown. But at the end of the day, at the end of all that, we are in present times now. We are in the year 2020, the cursed year that I shall never forget because of how notorious it is. And now... Seeing clickbait thumbnails and, like, red arrows on videos is almost like a regular occurrence. I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily translate to a video being clickbait, but it's like these red arrows, it's not like they've lost their effect. They still work. I'll, again, I find myself scrolling through my th feed every once in a while, I'll come across a red arrow, a random red circle, and I'll just stop immediately. And it's become especially prominent since I've now actually been getting my license and starting to drive on the road. Now, at the end of this all, at the end of all this, right, we've got to ask the question, was this really as big of a deal as we made it out to be? Or were we just looking for someone to pick on where, back in 2016, were we just mad that someone found a way to get more clicks in a time where people desperately needed them? This can be taken both ways. Me, personally, I'll say this. You can do whatever you want with a thumbnail. Honestly, it's your video. As long as you're following YouTube guidelines, that is fine. But there comes a point where... If you fall into that trap of putting out deceitful thumbnails and clickbait arrows, using all that stuff, all those tactics to get the upper hand, you may fool some kids. You may fool some kids. But as those kids grow older, right, and this happened with me, right, I was a young and dumb fellow once, all right, we all were. And when it comes down to it, when you use those tactics to gain an audience, you tend to latch onto that. And that becomes sort of your, like, your shtick, your style, so to speak. When that happens, you basically just end up being trapped in a box. You put yourself in a box of basically, hey, I'm just going to use these clickbait thumbnails and video titles, and it worked once, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it, am I right? But as, I, as us fellow YouTube watchers, us gamers, we grow, we learn, we adapt, we start to realize that these tactics... These tactics are dumb. <laughs> these these tactics, they, they just don't end up working on us at the end of the day. I've unsubscribed from many YouTubers who have actually used these tactics in the past because I realized something clicked in my mind as I kept growing, as I kept learning stuff. I realized something. I said, hey, what is this guy really doing for me? Is this guy's content really that good or is he just making really good thumbnails, really good breadsticks for, from Olive Garden, but then the food just is a, is a flop? That's what I started thinking about. And slowly but surely, I was able to really weed out like what was bad content, what was good content, what was manipulative, what was actual genuine content. So at the end of it all, honestly, this can be interpreted both ways. Like it can be 2016 was just an outburst of in the heat of the moment sort of thing. People were looking for something to get mad at. You always need a villain. You always need a villain. And in that certain time frame, YouTube clickbait thumbnails really became the bad guy, the enemy of the YouTube community. But then you got to also look at, maybe we just blew everything out of proportion. Because at the end of it all, at the end of it all, everyone's used a YouTube clickbait thumbnail. We've all thought that we would definitely get somewhere with that. And in maybe in some cases, it has really worked. And I've seen channels just definitely just based on this stuff. But you've got to think. Again... 
You can't stick with one thing forever and expect it to work forever. Maybe it works now, but at some point your luck's going to run out and you're going to have to switch up. And if you can't switch up, you can't adapt. You're just going to end up be just, it's going to be over. It's, it's going to be bad, so to speak. At the end of it all, honestly, you can think what you want. I'm not here to tell you one thing or another. I'm just here to list the facts and what I remember from the 2016 times, the adpocalypse times of the YouTube community. This is just one man's take, though. You've got plenty of videos made on this stuff. Go watch those. Go get get educated, my friend. That's the end of the video. Don't forget, like, subscribe if you really if you enjoyed the video, of course. I actually want to hear your thoughts on this. Were you around 2016 for this adpocalypse stuff when everything was going to shite and you really thought the world was going to end? <laughs> you know, because YouTube was going down. YouTube was a world at that time, pretty much. So yeah, that's about it. And take care.